In this lesson, we're going to learn how to locate and assess the left-sided pulmonary veins. And let's begin with the left upper pulmonary vein. And to find this vessel, let's begin with the four-chamber view. This view is found with a TE probe in the mid-esophageal position. And I'd suggest starting with a transducer imaging plane angle of zero degrees. Now this may require some optimization to avoid any foreshortening, but the optimal four-chamber view is normally found somewhere between zero and 20 degrees. So here we have the mid-esophageal four-chamber view. We have both atria and both ventricles clearly in the image. Now the left upper pulmonary vein that we're looking for is located just off the edge of a sector, just here, adjacent to the left atrium. So in order to bring the left upper pulmonary vein into view, we're going to have to make one or two further manipulations. And the manipulations that we're going to make are to turn the TE probe towards the patient's left, and also to withdraw the probe very slightly. And this should start to bring the left upper pulmonary vein into view. And so here we've made those probe manipulations, and you'll notice that we've also increased the transducer imaging plane angle to around 30 degrees. And making all those changes has now brought the left upper pulmonary vein into view. And you'll notice that the left upper pulmonary vein inserts into the left atrium in a relatively vertical orientation. This is in contrast to a left lower pulmonary vein, which we'll see shortly, inserts in a more horizontal orientation. Here we have a different patient, and this serves to illustrate that sometimes we need very different imaging plane angles, here 75 degrees, to obtain views of the left upper pulmonary vein. The vein is located here, and just adjacent to it is the left atrial appendage, and in between the two is the posterolateral ridge, also known as the ligament or fold of Marshall. The pulmonary veins are often easier to see when we switch on colour Doppler. We can see then the flow in the pulmonary vein, which is entering the left atrium. In fact, I'd suggest that you switch on colour Doppler from the outset when you're hunting for each of the four pulmonary veins, because it does make it somewhat easier to locate them. As well as colour Doppler, we should also perform pulsed wave Doppler, and we do this by placing the sample volume approximately one centimetre into the mouth of the pulmonary vein. Current guidelines recommend that we should do this in any two of the four pulmonary veins in order to thoroughly assess flow patterns. And here's the characteristic appearance of pulsed wave Doppler in the left upper pulmonary vein, and the flow pattern has three distinct components. First of all, we have what is called the S wave, which corresponds to antigrade flow in the pulmonary vein, entering the left atrium during ventricular systole. Immediately following the S wave, we have the D wave, and that also corresponds to a further phase of antigrade flow in the pulmonary vein, entering the left atrium during ventricular diastole. And then after the D wave, we have what is often called the A wave or the AR wave. And this corresponds to retrograde flow back up the pulmonary vein during atrial contraction. And we can time each of these waves using the ECG trace on the screen. So the ventricular systole or S wave occurs just after the QRS complex. The ventricular diastole or D wave occurs during diastole and the A wave, which corresponds to atrial contraction, occurs as you would expect just after a P wave. If a patient's in atrial fibrillation, then they will not have an A wave. Flow patterns in the pulmonary veins can of course tell us a great deal about cardiovascular hemodynamics. This patient has left ventricular diastolic dysfunction and we're seeing a pseudo-normal restrictive filling pattern in their left upper pulmonary vein flow. In other words, we have equalization in the size of the S and D waves. Normally the S wave is taller than the D wave. Assessment of pulmonary vein flow patterns can be particularly valuable in mitral regurgitation. A specific indicator for severe mitral regurgitation is systolic flow reversal, in other words, an inverted S wave. 
although this only applies if the regurgitant jet doesn't impinge directly upon the pulmonary vein being assessed. Let's now move on to the left lower pulmonary vein and to find this we advance a probe a little more down the esophagus and turn it a little further to the patient's left. And here we can appreciate how the left lower pulmonary vein inserts into the left atrium in a more horizontal orientation than the left upper pulmonary vein. As with the left upper pulmonary vein, we should assess the anatomy using 2D imaging and then assess flow patterns using colour and pulsed wave Doppler. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited TE Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So take care and I talk to you soon.